Special thanks to Aaron Goins for providing us with today's MSM Draw. Submit a drawing prompt with the hashtag MSM Draw in this video for a chance for it to be drawn in the next one. Hi everyone! Welcome back to the channel Creeptanium, where we learn all sorts of cool things using My Singing Monsters. I am your host, Wiblix the Wilux, and welcome to our fourth episode of Monster Biology. According to our cycle, we are on the magicals, so let's spin the wheel. Alright, let's see what we got. Either way, it's going to be interesting to try and explain it. Alright, let's imagine what it would look like to dissect a cantarelle. We shall begin by inspecting the outward appearance of this fairy monster, which reveals a lot of detail upon closer inspection. Beginning with the head caps of the cantarelle. Despite being rather uncommon, blue mushrooms do exist in the real world, and they look really cool. The closest species resembling the cantarelle is the Strafaria aruginosa, which has a blue cap, white spots, light-colored gills, and veils under the cap. The actual body of the cantarelle is a rubbery substance called chitin, which is the same complex sugar which makes up the exoskeleton of insects, arthropods, and crustaceans. The swirl markings on the elbows and the abdomen of this monster are merely decorative, a stylized way of representing joints and a belly button. And finally, the frill underneath the larger head of this monster can be found on many real-world mushrooms and is a remnant of a protective membrane which covered the gills and stalk of the mushroom when it first grew out of the ground. We get to the real interesting stuff when we look at the polycephalous nature and the faces of the cantarelle. Now obviously, the eyes of this monster suggest that there is a brain of sorts inside of the heads of the cantarelle, most likely one per head, for each of the eyes to attach to. The ideas of dual brains can be confusing to some. Which brain controls what parts of the body? Is it as simple as the body being mentally split down the middle? For the cantarelle, that's most likely. If one were to look at the resting animation, we can see that the slumbering head's respective arm twitch as if dreaming, while the smaller, awake head remains pretty chill and unmoving. Right controls right, and left controls left. Notice also how the cantabrelle has two mouths. Now you may have to look closely, but mushrooms in the human world don't usually have mouths. They normally digest food by secreting digestive juices through underground tentacles called hyphae. In the cantarelle's case, it moves so much and expends so much energy that it would need to find a larger source of energy than a mushroom's primary food source, which is rotting material. A mouth like one an actual animal would have would allow the cantarelle to eat more nutrient-rich food and get more energy out of it. And just like the mushrooms of the real world, it can excrete any waste it produces through its skin as water and carbon dioxide, making them very efficient organisms. Because this fairy monster also sings, it needs lungs and vocal cords as well. Like the clamble in episode 1, it probably relies on turgor pressure to move its simple muscles. And now at last, the burning question that everyone has been waiting to ask. What's up with the bigger head of the cantarelle? Why does it look and act the way it does? Well, I have quite the interesting theory. Firstly, I'll talk about the idea everyone has pretty much accepted, that the larger head has been subjected to some sort of mind-controlling organism. Similarly to the rit-rot disease of the epic octopus, the bigger cantarelle head has faded pupils and acts a little strange, eliciting sidelong glances from its smaller sibling. The cordyceps mushroom of the human world is infamous for infecting the minds of insects for its own reproductive benefit, so brain control mushrooms are not out of the question. However, my theory is a little more... uh... interesting. I propose that the larger head is under the control of semi-toxic mushroom proteins. You see, some species of fungus are harvested for their psychedelic side effects when consumed. Due to the unique chemicals found in these mushrooms, they can cause humans to go a bit loopy under their effects and are usually accompanied by a vivid visual experience. A cartoonish way to express being under the influence of these mushroom proteins is by glassing over the eyes, something we see the cantarelle exhibiting. 
It could also explain why the bigger head acts so funny when it sings. It's always dancing around when singing its part, and it always is seen with a big smile. Maybe the smaller head just doesn't approve of his sibling's life choices. It could be plausible, with the Cantarell being living mushrooms and all. It certainly would explain why Cantarell is in the magical class, if you know what I mean. The last feature to discuss lies deep within the soil. You see, a mushroom isn't the main body of the fungus. The true organism lies underground in the form of a network of mycelia, a web of hair-like tentacles that digest food and give support to the fruiting body, the mushroom, on the surface. In the human world, mycelium can spread over large areas and push mushrooms up through the soil. Even though you would see multiple on the surface, they all belong to one organism. A quick side note, the world's biggest fungus is a mycelium network in Oregon in the USA. It's around three and a half square miles, which is absolutely huge. Now that is a humongous fungus. The bio of the monster says that multiple genetically identical cantarelle can spring from the same network of mycelia, implying that if you ever see multiple cantarelle in one spot, they are all the same individual. Pretty cool, right? The bio states that they can quickly overpopulate an area, not leaving mushroom to grow, <laughs> leading them to grow in a ring shape so everyone can participate. Real world mushrooms also do this in a way. When a patch of mushrooms arises, they use up the nutrients in the soil. The middle of the patch runs out of food fastest, and the mycelium underground dies. The remaining mushrooms end up forming a neat little circle, which, get this, is called a fairy ring. So it all comes back in a nice little fairy motif, which I find quite satisfying. So that's that. Let's take a step back and see how we did. Study complete. We can add this to our portfolio. Now, since we're all here, I suppose I can take some time to explain what I would want to see with the rare and epic designs of the Cantarell. Rares don't deviate that much from their original in either theme or shape, so I picture rare Cantarell remaining some sort of mushroom. Perhaps it could be red and green, referencing Super Mario, or perhaps a type of gooey poisonous mushroom and having a darker color palette. Epic Cantarell could go crazy with designs. They could have a wizard or a castle theme, which would fit very nicely. Maybe they could even have some sort of alien inspiration. That would be really neat to see, but whatever Big Blue Bubble decides to do with them, I'm positive that it will be awesome. Well, we've reached the end of today's Monster Biology. Thanks so much for watching this fourth episode. Join me next time, where we will do a biology episode for a fire monster. I dearly hope that it's not Boscus, but we don't know. You have been watching the Cryptanium channel, and I will see you all later.